A big hello and welcome to Tutorial 3. In this video we'll be looking at some advanced editing techniques, um, but in the meantime just have a little listen to uh, this fantastic freestyling uh, with the Neon's Slice Editor. So I've had some pretty major additions, even since my last video, all of which have made their way into version 1.05, which should be available anytime now. So since most of those are editing features or different ways of uh, recording, uh, I want to go over these advanced techniques with you today, because uh, to get the most out of them, you really need to have them demonstrated. Now the first thing I want to look at in this tutorial is the new uh, in place drag and drop functionality and uh, anyone that's used uh, the drag and drop uh, will know that when you uh, drag files from say the files app into the editor it replaces the existing content so uh, in this case um, you can see here as I start drop, dragging and dropping different files into the editor uh, they will uh, replace uh, what was there. Now this is the system-wide default for drag and drop, but if we press the menu button and head over to settings, there's a new drag and drop option. Uh, it's currently set on replace, and if I click that, we get in place drag and drop. Now I'm going to clear uh, the contents of this editor for this example uh, and because we've got an empty editor I'm going to insert some silence, some space uh, in this case uh, 16 bars of silence so we actually have some content to work with here Now to perform accurate drag and drop uh, it's a good idea to turn on the grid and in this case I'm going to snap to quarter notes now in previous versions of Neon we've always been able to select a file from say the files app uh, click on that file and click copy uh, position the cursor in the editor wherever we want to insert and then from the clipboard we can pick merge and that will actually paste at the cursor position but now with in place drag and drop turned on we're able to drag and drop clips directly to a specific point within the timeline. Now there's a big difference between these two methods that I'm going to demonstrate now. If I try and drop this snare drum in place you'll see that it's obliterated the bass drum that I dropped previously. Now I'm going to undo that and the reason why it did that is because it overwrites existing data. If I was to copy that data and place the cursor and then pick the merge option what that actually does is it merges with existing data rather than overwrite. So the drag and drop is always overwrite and the copy merge is merge in place. Now this third uh, sample is actually a hi-hat so I'll just uh, merge a few of them into place. And I think you get the idea here that you can actually build up a sample uh, using individual components. It's just another tool in your arsenal. So we can work on small fragments like this and then uh, to expand that we can uh, simply tap and hold on the select and pick select all and then hit the clipboard and duplicate to extend it and carry on editing. So I think that's a great new addition to, uh, to drag and drop within the editor but that mode has to be enabled. Now the next topic I want to look at is sessions. Now if we go into slice mode here and pick regions you'll see that it immediately picks out the uh, the peaks in that waveform which happen to be the snare drums. Now I want you to imagine we've done something a little bit more elaborate and spent a lot of time getting these slices just right. 
Now, just saving a waveform does not save the slices. It just saves the waveform. So to get around that, we have these things called sessions now. And we can save and load sessions from the media bay. And if you look, there's a new sessions tab uh, on the media bay. Now, if I try and save this session, you'll notice that we immediately get an error because we never actually saved uh, the audio to disk. So we first need to do that and uh, save the audio with a specific file name. Uh, and then uh, once that file exists, we can then save a session which references it. So it's an important thing to note. So now we've saved the audio file, we can actually go to the sessions tab and save the session which defaults to the same name as the audio we've just saved. Now, just remember that a session does not contain audio, it contains references to the original audio. So now if I was to uh, wipe this file and uh, end up with a step with a blank, uh, we can now go back to the media bay, back to the sessions tab, highlight the session, hit load, and now we get back the uh, the, the whole entire uh, setup with all the slices and everything that were referenced in that original audio file. Now, because we constructed this file ourselves and we can see it's 120 beats per minute at the top of the screen, what if we'd have imported this and we didn't know the tempo? Well, one way to find out is to actually tap on the tempo button and uh, tap and hold on the uh, tap tempo icon. Neon will now estimate the BPM and set the tempo up accordingly. Now I'm currently doing this in standalone mode, so I have access to the tempo because when hosted as an AUV3, the tempo is locked to host. And I'll show you a way around that in a minute. Now I've got another file here, which I know is a specific BPM, <laughs> but uh, obviously the tempo is set incorrectly right now. But again, if we tap and hold on the tap tempo, uh, it gets adjusted to the 130 beats per minute that we know this file is. Now this is also true of warp. We can do exactly the same in warp because obviously if you want to warp a sample, you need to know the original tempo. So if we tap on hold on the warp and then tap and hold the tap tempo, again, it estimates the tempo and sets up the warp uh, BPM accordingly. Now, if uh, Neon is loaded as an AUV3, as here inside of AUM, uh, you'll see that the tempo is um, is locked to that of the host. If we change the host tempo, then Neon's tempo changes along with that. Now, ordinarily, you want to be locked to the host tempo in nearly all cases. If I press the tempo button now, you'll see we'll get an error telling us that the host is in charge of tempo. But if you long press on the tempo button, it temporarily disables that locking to host. So now we've got access to this menu and we can actually uh, do a tempo change. Uh, if you long press on that button again, on the tempo button, it then resumes uh, normal functionality and, and locks back to the host tempo. So now this estimated tempo feature makes uh, warping very easy. If we turn on warp mode and then press and hold warp to change the settings, long press on the tap tempo, it's now estimated the original tempo and we're all ready to go. So now we've configured the original tempo, we can now change the tempo of the host and uh, have Neon uh, follow that tempo. So uh, that's a great, a great new feature I think is the estimate tempo feature. Uh, so let's just change the tempo up a little bit and here we go. Now some drum beats are very difficult to estimate tempo. So suppose we have a drum beat and estimate tempo gets it wrong. Then there is another way of uh, manually um, estimating which is to tap and hold on the tempo button to disengage it from a uh, host uh, sync. And that gives us access to the tempo options. Now, when we open up the tempo dialog, if you lightly rest your finger over the actual BPM and slide your finger left to right, you'll see that the actual waveform moves on the timeline. And we can use this to kind of uh, line up the peaks within the waveform uh, against the ruler. And that will give you a, a really good idea of, uh, of the tempo. And here I think that tempo is 120 beats per minute. Again, once you've done that, don't forget to uh, long press on the tempo button to re-engage with the host. So I'm sure by now if you've used Neon, you'll be familiar with the traditional form of recording. If we long press on the record button, we get the record options. 
Uh, here I'm just going to demonstrate quickly that we can set a recording level and then if we uh, press the record button within Neon, Neon will sit and wait for the host to start playing and the recording will start at uh, beat zero and start recording on until we hit the stop button. But suppose we want to uh, start playback at a specific point within the host, so maybe bar four for instance. Uh, the way we do that is to use something called uh, in-place recording, which can be turned on from the record menu. Now, AUM's transport is currently positioned at bar 4, so when I hit the record button within Neon, the cursor is positioned at bar 4, and then when we hit play in the host transport, uh, recording will begin. Now, everything up to bar 4 will just be filled with silence. But it's a nice way of actually uh, recording something to play back at a specific offset. Now I think in one of my previous videos I mentioned that if you uh, tap and hold on the play button we get access to uh, output level and that's an attenuation level but we also now have an input level as well as an output level so that's very handy if you want to attenuate the input if you're getting something that's just uh, creating too much distortion or you've got too much output we can attenuate it there the media bay has become a great way of uh, storing and managing your files but of course if you've got lots of files and folders here finding something might be quite difficult now if you swipe up on the media bay toolbar you can make this full screen and once in full screen mode if you actually pull down on the uh, files area we actually get a search facility now this search facility will go away as soon as you type scroll again. Now if I type in something like Doug, i.e. Doug Woods, i.e. Uh, cool Beans, uh, we'll get a whole bunch of files that have the word Doug inside them, including this folder. And when it's done, it's done a deep search within the folder structure and, and highlighted any folder that contains a file with that word. Now if you've got a large uh, collection of uh, samples and a large directory structure, I can't tell you how important that would be. So uh, that's the uh, Media Bay file search. Now if we take a quick look in settings, you'll notice that uh, Save on Exit by default is turned on. And what that means is that if you actually ever record anything or construct anything and don't actually save it, and then exit the program, um, you'll see that these uh, unsaved one, unsaved two, unsaved three, these are files that have been saved automatically when you exit, just to prevent you losing whatever you've recorded. Now you can rescue these, or you can long press on the delete button and choose to trash them all. So it's a nice hidden feature there, hidden away on the delete button. So instead of deleting a single file, that long press deletes all the uh, the unsaved files from the media bay. Now to finish off this video I'm going to put together a few of the things that we've learned and just show you uh, uh, what we can do with this uh, drum sample here. In particular I want to show you how to use the uh, in place drag and drop in a very creative way to mangle and uh, manipulate and rework your drum samples. Now it's pretty obvious that the tempo is wrong for this sample so I'm just going to long press on the tap tempo button to estimate the tempo now that looks more in keeping you can see the peaks actually lining up with the ruler now i'm going to set a suitable grid size of eighth notes and i'm going to make a selection of the first four beats of this sample now there's a handy hidden feature in neon if you tap the uh, clipboard button you'll get the clipboard options cut copy paste merge and duplicate and so on but if you long press this button and drag you get a drag and drop object which is uh, basically the selection in the editor but even better if we turn on this in place drag and drop you, can, you probably guessed it you can now drag and drop sections of this sample and actually <laughs> create a mangled version as you can see I can drag that two beat or four beat selection around and then just drag and keep appending and create a unique drum beat out of what was a fixed uh, sample uh, that I found in some uh, drum library somewhere so a great way of mangling drum beats and uh, let's just hear what that sounds like so 
So hopefully you get the idea. Now I've tried to go over some really useful uh, advanced features here that are, night, that are hidden away and you probably wouldn't find on your own. So I hope you found that of interest. Uh, that's it for this video. Hope to see you again. Don't forget to thumb up and like this video and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.